It's finally game day. Here's what we'll be watching for when the Miami Hurricanes take the field today against the Texas A&M Aggies. You are Locked on Canes, your daily podcast on the Miami Hurricanes, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Happy Saturday, happy game day. I'm Alex Dono, your host, University of Miami alumnus, longtime South Florida sports radio vet, and contributor to allhurricanes.com. Thank you so much to the everydayers for making Locked on Canes your first listen as we get you set for a 3.30 p.m. kickoff today at Hard Rock Stadium. The Miami Hurricanes hosting the Texas A&M Aggies, trying to avenge a 17-9 loss at College Station last year in Week 2. Both of these teams look significantly different and better. Both teams look better, in my opinion, than they did one year ago. The fan duel odds have the Miami Hurricanes as four-and-a-half-point underdogs, so if you think the Canes are going to win outright, you definitely want to smash that today. So when the Hurricanes come out for warm-ups today, and I will be at Hard Rock Stadium watching the full warm-ups, the guy that I'm going to be looking for, will he be in full pads? Will he be in uniform? I'm going to be looking for Elijah Arroyo, number 80. He was, we think, a late scratch last week. You know, I saw him out there with just the jersey on, no pads last week. And Mario Cristobal basically said again this week that Elijah Arroyo is more or less a game time decision, right? So I want to see if number 80 can go. If he can't go, we know Cam McCormick is going to get most of the tight end snaps, and he's going to hold things down as a blocking tight end, right? And I'm sure Miami is also going to use a lot of four receiver sets to get an extra pass catcher on the field if Arroyo can't play. But if Elijah Arroyo can play, remember he had the ACL surgery early last season. Uh, he has been limited in camp. I think he's had a bit of, a bit of a hamstring issue coming back from those injuries. If he can play today, it's going to give Miami an important extra dimension to their passing game. Because Elijah Arroyo is the most well-rounded tight end on the team right now. If he's not ready yet today, I hope he is, I wonder how much Miami would trust true freshman Riley Williams to play some additional snaps this week. He's young and inexperienced. He did look good in the fourth quarter against Miami of Ohio, and he's had a really good camp so far. So that's always going to be the first thing that I look for. When the players are warming up, who's in pads, who's not, who looks like they're not going to play, you know, who's lined up with the first team, second team, and so on. I will definitely be looking for number 80 today. When the Miami Hurricanes have the football, establishing ground control. It's not everything, but it's the biggest thing today. If that Hurricanes offensive line can win the trench battles against AM's deep D line, talk about all those former five star recruits that AM has on that side of the football. But if Miami can win those trench battles, the Aggies are in for a really difficult game today in Miami. Uh, the guy that we're really going to be watching for today, a and defensive tackle, Walter Nolan. He's a superstar and a stud. He could really give us fits. Uh, we need in this one Matt Lee and JV on Cohen to play some bully ball. They played bully ball against Miami, Ohio. Texas A&M is a completely different beast. Hopefully the Hurricanes can establish that control at the line of scrimmage. Can Miami, though, because running the ball, it's going to make your life so much easier if you can do that. And, of course, we know – A.J. Allen, Henry Parrish, Mark Fletcher, Don Chaney, pick your poison. These are four excellent running backs. Uh, and if Miami can run the ball, that's going to open things up on the perimeter. Miami's got to make plays. Can Miami hit those passing plays on the perimeter? Can you get a couple of explosive plays in the passing game? The Aggies have a talented and experienced collection of defensive backs. You know, you watch out for Damani Richardson and, boy, Josh DeBerry had an awesome game last week, and he had a really good fall camp for a &M. But in his first game as an Aggie, DeBerry transferred in from Boston College. Uh, he made his Aggies debut against New Mexico with 10 tackles, an interception, and a sack. So you definitely have to watch out for him. Uh, and the connection that I'm going to be really focusing on today, I think it'd be too obvious to say Tyler Van Dyke and Xavier Restrepo because, duh. But the connection I'm really looking for today, Tyler Van Dyke and Colby Young. Because we got some good glimpses of that last week, and we got a few good glimpses of that last season before Van Dyke got injured. On the few occasions that Tyler Van Dyke and Colby Young have played together, Young at six foot five, he's now quicker than he was last year. He's looked like a bona fide number one receiver. 
he needs to make some big contested catches today. And yes, I hope Tyler Harrell, who had just one catch in his Miami debut last week, I hope the speedster who runs that 4-2 is an even bigger part of the offense this week. Because if you can hit a couple of deep shots to Tyler Harrell, that's going to completely open things up and stretch the field. So Van Dyke has got to be sharp today. Uh, he's already shown us, has Tyler Van Dyke, that he can run this Dawson offense. Uh, now he's got to show us he can run this offense against a much better defensive front. And he's also got to show us he can hit more consistent plays downfield because the game plan and what Miami, Ohio was giving you defensively just didn't call for that this week. You're going to need to hit some shots this week. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about Miami's defense on the other side as the Hurricanes are taking on the Texas A&M Aggies today. I'm excited, but I'm also anxious and I'm also nervous because we all know how important this game is, folks. We know how important this game is. To Mario Cristobal and his team to show second year, different Miami, we have arrived, right? For Texas A&M, Jimbo Fisher's been there forever, and, you know, they they regressed a lot last year. Jimbo is basically trying to keep himself off the hot seat. So this is a really important game for both teams today in Miami Gardens. And if you want to attend that game today, folks, it's not too late. I know some of you think, last-minute tickets, is that really a thing? Is that going to be too stressful of an experience? Am I getting a deal? Folks, you are always getting a deal at game time. I'm looking at game time right now. You can get tickets today in the 300s for just $34 a piece to watch Miami versus Texas A&M. You can get tickets in, let me see if I can find the uh, the 100 level here. Uh, you can get tickets $46 each in section 131. Guys, you have to check out the flash deals at game time. Game day is all about game time. Lowest price guarantee. The game time guarantee means you'll always get the best price. If you find tickets in the same section and row for less, game time will credit you 110% of the difference. You can get images of your seat view before you buy so you know exactly what you're looking at. So, folks, I'm telling you, bounce, uh, pounce, I should say, bounce. Pounce on those last-minute deals today. Download the game time app. Create an account and use code Locked On College for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code Locked On College for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Thank you so much for making Locked On Canes this game day edition your first listen today. We are available free wherever you get your podcasts and available free on YouTube. So for the Hurricanes on defense. It's all about the pass rush, folks, because pregame, we've been hearing a lot about how amazing Connor Wegman is, about how unstoppable Texas A&M's receivers are. These are fine players, folks, but I got to tell you, over the last couple of days, and I do this before every opponent, okay, I've been on a lot of Texas A&M blogs and news sites over the last couple of days just to read what their, you know, media are saying and trying to learn more about these. This is my job to learn more about their team. But I've noticed something. These Aggies bloggers and Aggies writers are giving less than zero respect to Miami. I don't think I found a single one who's like, oh, yeah, Miami may have an advantage in a certain area or Miami's got a shot to win this game. All of the Aggies bloggers basically think they're going to win this in a blowout, that not only not only will they cover four and a half, they would cover 40 and a half if that was the line for this game. No respect whatsoever. So I don't know if any of those headlines are leaking to Miami's players. So I don't know if that's bulletin board material, material for them, but it's bulletin board material for me. I want to make some Aggies fans cry today. I'm guessing there's going to be Good portion of the Texas A&M fans, they travel well. I mean, what else do they have to do in uh, College Station, Texas? They, they'd love to come to Miami and watch a game. I want them all to be weeping when they leave the stadium today. Let's make those losers pay on the field today. But yes, for Miami, it's all about the pass rush. Uh, Connor Wegman, young quarterback, second year. He's talented, but how is he going to respond to getting smacked in the mouth? You need to smack him in the mouth and make him uncomfortable. You know, he played great against New Mexico. These Aggies fans talk about New Mexico as if uh, as if they beat, uh, you know, 2005 USC or something or 2001 Miami last week. Zero pass rush whatsoever. And he picked them apart, having plenty of time to throw. But can Wegman do the same thing if Miami can get pressure in his face from the likes of Akeem Mesidor, Ruben Bain, Jafari Harvey, Nigel Lee Kelly, hopefully Leonard Taylor, because we need Leonard Taylor to have a big game today. 
Uh, so listen, Wegman, he lacks experience. And Lance Guidry, Miami's defensive coordinator, he specializes in confusing quarterbacks with his defensive fronts. Let Guidry cook today. The matchup between Guidry and Bobby Petrino is going to be an interesting one throughout this game today. And yeah, listen, uh, constant pressure would be nice. Uh, I'm sure that there are going to be times when Wegman does have time to throw. Miami's defensive backs, they need to be error-free going up against AM's super group of wideouts, right? Cam Kinchins, he needs to set the tone. The communication needs to be important. James Williams needs to have a special game. Cornerbacks, especially the ones with experience like Daryl Porter, Devontae Brown, these guys need to shine today. Going back to Miami's offense, Tyler Van Dyke, we talked about him a lot on our Friday episode. TVD not only needs to make some explosive plays, but he also needs to avoid the big mistakes. Taking care of the football has to be the number one priority. Last year, Miami lost this game due to mistakes, self-inflicted wounds, terrible red zone execution last year, bad special teams execution, a muffed punt. Uh, Hurricanes would have won that game in College Station last year had they played a cleaner game last season. Special teams is going to have a major emphasis in this one. Uh, I do expect the sure-handed Xavier Restrepo to be the primary punt returner again today. No muffs, please. Remember Tyreek... X was injured for the game last year. He didn't play against Texas A&M. Tyreek Stevenson muffed a punt last year. That was a turnover. Uh, and for kickoff returns, Restrepo and Brashard Smith will likely handle the bulk of those. I wonder if Miami would get creative and maybe, you know, give somebody like a Ray Ray Joseph or a Tyler Harrell opportunities to return kicks. Just thinking about the fastest guys on the team. But X, very sure-handed. Brashard Smith, very experienced. Those are probably the guys that they trust on kickoff returns. And lastly, folks, Hurricanes need to put on a show for these recruits. The recruiting section is going to be loaded, and we've talked a lot the last couple of days. Check out our Friday episode with Brian Smith where we scouted some of the players who are going to be in attendance. There's going to be a ton of the top players in the class of 2025, in addition to a handful of really important undecided players in the class of 2024. We talked yesterday about LJ McCray. Uh, a player we haven't talked about, but we need to talk about, is four-star edge Booker Pickett. Class of 2024 standout, four-star defensive end out of Tampa. He is going to be in attendance in the recruiting section today. And Booker Pickett is a legacy. His father played in Miami in the mid-90s. Pickett is six foot three. Uh, I feel like he's one of those guys where... We haven't gotten the updated weight in a long time because he's he's listed at 205, but I'm I'm told he's bigger than 205 by now, Booker Pickett. So I, you know, you're saying he's only 205. Is this another Cyrus Moss or another undersized guy? I, I think but Pickett, keep in mind he's still in high school, but I think Pickett, I think his weight is bigger than the 205 that he's listed at. Uh, and this young man, Booker Pickett Jr., 30 sacks last year as a junior at Wharton High School in Tampa. He's like the Reuben Bain of Tampa. This guy, 30 sacks last year in his junior season, uh, and he's going to be in the recruiting section today. So uh, hopefully Jason Taylor, and I know people are like, what about this defensive line recruiting? Jason Taylor with the edges has, has done a good job. Miami has landed some really good defensive ends to this point. They flipped Elias Rudolph. Uh, you know, landing Marquise Lightfoot was big. Miami now has their eyes and their sights set on Booker Pickett Jr. He's going to be at the game today. Put on a show for these guys. Play with pride. Play with pride, Miami. Go out there. Play physical. Try to establish your dominance out there at the line of scrimmage. It should go without saying. And again, if you weren't planning on going to the game, we gave you an awesome option for very affordable last-minute tickets at GameTime.co or the GameTime app. Let's get out there. Let's wear orange. It's an orange out today. Let's scream and yell and go crazy and let's make that environment as hostile as we possibly can for Texas A&M. And let's go out there and get that W. Huge shout out and thank you to everyone for making Locked on Canes your first listen today. Enjoy the game today. Uh, I'm going to be on uh, 560 WQAM with Malik Rozier right after the game. If you want to listen to our post-game radio show, which is going to go for like two and a half, three hours after the game. And then we'll be back on Locked on Canes tomorrow for a full breakdown of everything that happens today against the Aggies. So we will talk to you next time on another episode of Locked on Canes, part of the awesome Locked on Podcast Network.
your team every day.